Hi everyone, I'm Coretta. Welcome back to my channel. So if you're watching this video, it's because I had a different video planned for this week and then it went horribly wrong and I didn't get to do what I wanted to do and it ended up very different than how I planned. So I'm filming this one instead. Um, <laughs> so that's just a little disclaimer. Um, I have a song, strong suspicion this is the video that's going to end up going out. But so here's what I have planned. I wanted to do a video that featured bird watching as a small aspect of it. I, being a person who has never really been into birding, never really paid much attention to birds before, thought it would be super easy and um, it wasn't. So now this is going to be more of a video of me learning about bird watching, which I think is really cool because it's never really been something that I paid much attention to. And I always thought like, okay, when I was younger, I thought people were like crazy for watching birds. Like, why would anyone care? And then, you know, I'm a biologist, so I understand mentally that birds are really cool and diverse and they are descendants of dinosaurs and that's really awesome. But like, it doesn't really mean anything to me personally. Um, and then I started making this video and I realized like it's actually super fun and really cool. Um, but still, I know nothing about it. So this is going to be a video of me watching birds, basically. <laughs> um, so I have a bird feeder set up in that tree and I sit in that chair. Um, and I'm like, I just, I don't know. We'll, we'll just figure it out. Okay, so I got this bird feeder and this bird seed from Lowe's the other day, um, probably about a week ago. And what I like about them is that they're both from Audubon and Audubon is a society that's like all about birds and protecting birds and natural wildlife. So it's really good to support causes like that. And also on this bag, they have like the different types of seeds that come with this package and the different types of birds that it should attract. And when you're looking for bird seed, you always want to look for birds like seed that will feed the birds that actually exist in your area so doing like a little bit of research if you have no idea before of like what types of birds exist in the place that you live that's always a good thing because then you know you're going to be getting the seeds that will feed those birds and will attract those birds so one thing that i'm really starting to enjoy about this whole bird watching endeavor is that like they're just genuinely interesting to look at like I've never really observed birds before in this sense. Like I've never just watched them eat or how they eat or in the ways that they interact with other birds. So it's really cool to see like how birds are just like in their natural environment when they think they're not being watched. Okay, sorry, I don't have better quality. I didn't have time to go out and get my DSLR, but if you can see it at like the bottom Oh, it's, that's its tail right there. That's a downy woodpecker. I think it's a, oh, it just flew away. And now a black capped chickadee is there. Oh, it just flew away. So I want to read a quote from a book that my friend sent me that I feel really encapsulates why I'm starting this bird watching journey, if you want to call it that. Everyone has seen or heard birds, but not many people look at birds closely or even notice them regularly. Even fewer go searching for them or try to put a name to them. That's what birders do. Just get outdoors, find a bird, hoist your binoculars, focus on it, and you've become a birder with field experience. This bird has entered your memory bank of images, even if you don't know its name. Over time, depending on how often you go out looking, those mental images become linked with the bird's species name, even its age, its sex, and other details of its life history. The effect is cumulative. The more you go birding, the faster you'll progress. I think this quote really sums it up perfectly. I see birds all the time, every day, but I never once paid attention to what kind they are, what they do, what they sound like, or how they interact with us and each other. This is just one small way I want to encourage myself to become more engaged with nature in my everyday life. Hey guys, so I'm about to run out the house um, just to run errands and stuff and I thought I'd stop by my bird feeder just to check what's going on and it seems like birds are now like really comfortable with it being there and like it's kind of like a regular occurrence to see birds here now. Um, a black capped chickadee just flew away as I was speaking. Um, I actually just learned that black-capped chickadees are the state bird of Massachusetts, so that's 
pretty cool. I don't really know anything about their abundance, so that's probably why I see a lot of them over here. Um, one thing I have noticed, let me go, now that there's no birds over here. One thing I have noticed is that the bird seed has gone down significantly since I was last out here. And I don't know if that's because of squirrels or if because there's just more birds coming than I'm like thinking of, but I am think I'm gonna try um, putting it on a string and putting it on a bit higher up of a branch just to like test and see if it goes down like any quicker. It's also possible that I could be going down quicker just because there's more birds coming, they're more used to it being here, um, stuff like that. So I don't know, but I kind of want to make my bird seed last because I'm about to run out. So yeah, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. There's always like birds hanging out in this tree now, which is really cool. Um, yeah. So another thing that I learned today, and I don't want to be like a downer, but I think this is worth talking about. Um, so I learned today that John James Audubon, who, you know, the Audubon Society. So the Audubon Society is named after the Audubon family, like John Audubon and his wife. Um, and some of you guys might know the book of like prints that he did, like the art book that he did of birds across America. I don't really remember what it's called, but it's something like that. Um, and I found out today that he was a slave owner and him and his wife were very against abolition. Um, and that's something that like, I don't know, it doesn't, it, it makes me feel sad and like, I guess disappointed, but not surprised just given American history in general and the way we kind of learn to forget the horrors of our history and praise people for doing stuff that they shouldn't be praised for in general. Um, yeah, it just kind of serves as like a constant reminder that like racism is ingrained in every aspect of our society. And that's something that we need to be conscious of all the time, I think. Um, something that like really inspired me to even start like caring about bird watching is like Black Birders Week on Twitter inspired by the whole Amy Cooper situation um, with the guy who was birding in Central Park in New York. And then, they, you, know, you know, everyone knows that story, whatever. But like, that's just one small thing where it's like even bird watching isn't like racism free and on Facebook there's whole like make birding great again Facebook groups that are like anti Black Lives Matter and it sucks that we can't all just like put aside or like not even put aside those differences but not even have those differences in the first place like why should racism be a problem in bird watching. Birds don't care about what race we are and we are so excited to see the diversity of birds out there. So why are we so closed off to who can enjoy that? I mean, we should be celebrating the diversity of our people too and not just the diversity of birds. Um, but yeah, that kind of like really upset me this morning to learn that like, you know, the person who started this whole thing who like is kind of lauded I guess he's not really like the the organization was started way after he died um and they have stuff on their website about it um which is nice but still it's not like common knowledge you know and we we tout around the Audubon Society and we use his name um as a symbol of good as a symbol of conservation of symbol of celebrating animals and diversity and stuff like that but it also has this really dark side to it where it also represents slavery and, you know, taking away people's human rights and selling people and, and hor horrible, horrible things that happened in this country. And we just kind of forget about that because of birds. But like, this is also something that's really important that we need to talk about, that we need to remember as a part of who he was, also as a part of like his birding stuff. So I don't know, <laughs> just something to think about, I guess when it comes to everyday life and how racism affects it and how the history of America has kind of bred this idea that you can be racist and it won't affect you <laughs> because if you do anything else, it's fine. But, you know, for, for some people, for non-black people, I should say, you know, knowing that, knowing that Mr. Audubon was a slave owner and a horrible person, 
is just like, oh, that's bad news. That sucks. But it doesn't mean anything to them. But for black people, it's just a constant reminder of generational trauma and of slavery and of not being welcome in a space that we have no business not being welcome in. Um, there were plenty of Native Americans and African Americans who helped him find birds and understand the land and stuff like that. And no credit goes to them. So just think about these things. Just think about these things is all I'm trying to say, really. And just be aware of the issues that are present in our society. So speaking of Audubon, the app that I've been using to help me identify and keep track of the birds I've been seeing is called Audubon Bird Guide. There are plenty of bird watching and bird identifying apps out there, but this is just the one that I use because it was recommended to me and it works. So for example, the bird I've been seeing the most is called the black cap chickadee. And this app tells you everything you'd ever want to know about it and more. I also like that it gives you many ways of identifying birds from what they look like to how they sound. For me personally, it's much easier to remember what something sounds like than what it looks like. So being able to identify something from how it sounds is very useful for me. Okay, so there is a little black capped chickadee right up there. Oh, it just flew away. Um, but that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. I know I learned a lot just by making this video and now I'm like super excited and I pay attention to birds more even though I don't really know what I'm looking at but it's still just cool to like pay attention and know what's around you. So if you like this video make sure you like it and subscribe and comment down below if you have any thoughts or questions on anything that I've mentioned and make sure you check out the rest of my videos on my channel. So thank you so much for watching. Bye!